Hey, Emmanuel family, coming back with another midweek update. Right off the top, let me mention that we are in the middle of our North American Go offering. You know this, you've supported it. And so let me begin saying thank you. You've been so faithful to support the work of missionaries in North America that's still going on in spite of this crisis. Their work continues. So the money that are given to our North American Go offering supports Annie Armstrong, which is the name of our offering we do cooperating with other Southern Baptist churches, as well as our North American Go partners that we support individually as a church. We'll continue that offering to the end of this month, so pray about how God would have you support that. Also, uh, we sent out a survey earlier this week. Many of you have received it, you responded. Thank you for doing that. It doesn't take just a few minutes to respond. Uh, it's embedded here below if you wanna check out that link and fill it out. It would only take you about 10 minutes to do so. But essentially, we're trying to figure out how are you doing? Uh, are there ways we can touch you more? Since we can't see people physically, we're very concerned that we make the right touches and that we provide the right type of spiritual ministry that's meeting the need in your life. So thank you for giving us some feedback on how we're doing and how we can serve more effectively. Now, we've had questions about our North Campus construction, and so Dr. Pig, our executive pastor, is here to give us an update on construction. Thank you, Pastor. Construction is going on, it's on time. If you happen to go by the church, and you go by the entrance, you'll see some construction going on there. We're widening that area so that cars can get in and out uh, with, with ease. And also we're widening to make way for the carts. And the new carts that we purchased are enclosed, both heated and cooled, and you'll enjoy those. And we'll be following up soon with a picture of those so you'll see what you have the opportunity to use. On the north side of the construction, we've just added on to the foundation. We've actually poured part of the foundation. And uh, we are also in the process of putting in the north elevator and, and the construction of it, once that's out of the way, we'll pour the rest of the foundation. Another update for you would be that soon you'll be receiving from preschool and children about the renovations we're doing in those areas. And you'll have instructions about where those new uh, areas will be that you'll move into during this construction time. But we're just looking forward to all this taking place. It is on schedule and we're just looking forward to moving into that new space when it becomes available. Excellent. Thank you. Well, as you know, we're now in a different phase of this pandemic. We're now beginning to think about what is this going to look like when we come back together. So pray for us as a staff. We're thinking through this, praying this uh, as details are uh, laid out for us as citizens of our state and of our country. And also as we think about how best to reconvene and worship back together. And I pray you have a phenomenal week and look forward to seeing you in Bible study next or Sunday in worship. Hey, good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm so excited about our topic tonight. We're going to talk about journaling. And so if you would, grab your Bible and turn to Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13, and we're going to read verse 9 in just a minute. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 9. So what does the Bible say about journaling, about keeping a journal? You really? You ready? Here it is. Uh, nothing. It really doesn't say anything specific about journaling. I've heard people take the text, I believe it's in Habakkuk, where we're told to write down the vision, uh, but that's something very different. That was actually a vision that God was giving to a prophet at one particular time. Of course, the scriptures are obviously recorded in print, so some people have argued that for those reasons we should keep a journal. But I think perhaps those are taking verses out of context. Uh, the Bible doesn't say something specific about journaling, but it does say a lot about memory. And this is the point. So with your Bible at Exodus chapter 13, which is where we're going to be uh, this next Sunday, Exodus chapter 13, look at verse 9, Exodus chapter 13 and verse 9. And it shall be to you as a sign on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this statue as its appointed time from year to year. So Sunday, when we gather together and we open God's Word, we're going to be talking about what happened after the Exodus. So they exited out of Egypt. And what happens next? Well, what happened in the next moment and what happened during that moment is God calls them to remember in three ways. He said, first of all, I want you to keep forever a Passover feast. And the Jewish people keep this feast to this day. I want you, secondly, to consecrate the firstborn. So I took Egypt's firstborn. You're my firstborn. So every firstborn child belongs to me. 
And thirdly, I want you to practice the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The fact that they were in haste, in a hurry, they were pressed to get out of Egypt. They take this Feast of Unleavened Bread to remind them that they didn't even have time to let their bread rise as they were leaving. So these three things that they were to celebrate were to serve as memorials. In other words, it was to always be in their mind and on their heart that God had done this in their life. God was appealing to their sense of memory. Now, just by way of introduction, still, uh, memory is an interesting thing. Uh, I've known people in my life who have had just extremely good memories. I had a friend I handed a book to once on a plane. He thumbed through it for about five minutes and then basically told me what the contents of the book were about. He knew specific things and what page they were on. He had this freakishly good memory. I've had known people that 20 years ago, I could tell them an email address or a phone number. They could hear it once and they had it. God had created them with that memory, but that's highly unusual. Uh, On the other end of the spectrum, there are people that have diseases, abnormalities, if you will, uh, by which they can't remember anything from the last day or some extreme cases from what happened a few hours ago. Or every day they wake up is a new day because they can't remember who they were or what happened. And that type of mind that functions like that, we would call that abnormal. It's unusual because we do have memories. At the same time, the people who have these extremely good memories, that's also very unusual as well. So all that to say, uh, we can learn two things just by observing these things from nature. That first of all, God has given us memories as a good gift. Our memories are a a gracious gift from God. We love to recall songs that we've sung. Uh, Recently, I downloaded a lot of pictures off my phone and what a thrill it was to see my children at at various ages and stages along the life and through their development. Uh, So we have this good gift that God's given to us, these memories that he's given to us. But secondly, we also know this, that our memories are not perfect. If it was easy to recall things all the time, then perhaps God would not have given these very, very detailed instructions by ways that they should remember. Details by which that that also are carried on to the New Testament and the idea of the Lord's Supper. They call to mind, they cause us to remember certain things. And so while the act of journaling is not in the scripture, the act of memory is. So let's just leave that and go into it as a launching place, let's ask this question, why should we journal? Why should we journal? And that's the first reason. We journal to remember. So uh, when I go back from time to time and look at journals over seasons of life, in fact, I've got a, a pretty detailed journal about how I was contacted by the search team of Emmanuel and all the providential circumstances that led up to that and made my heart and mind uh, ready for that conversation how he led through that conversation and coming through all of that. Man, those are such sweet memories. But even that was only three years ago, I've forgotten so many of the details of that. And so I go back and am able to look at that. But remember that remembering doesn't just function in reading what we've written. Remembering functions in writing it down. So even the function of writing something serves to help us remember. And that leads us to the second reason we keep a journal. The first reason we keep a journal is because we want to remember, recall all the things that God has done. Think about the Psalms all the time that we're called to remember the great things that God has done. But the second reason is, is that it helps us think. Now, I could spend a lot of time here talking about this because I found this to be of the most incredible practical help. When you think about people that have written books or written things that Uh, should be read, uh, things that are of great value. Our minds um, kind of construct this idea that here's someone, they've got a really good mind, their mind is full with thoughts, and so they have to write them down so they have clarity in their mind, and so they go there and they express with clarity um, what was in their mind. Well, if, if you've done any writing at all, you know that that's not always the case. In fact, it's rarely the case. C.S. Lewis said this, it's not until I finished writing that I know what I wanted to say. And that sounds strange, but what he was saying is a familiar sentiment if you've tried any writing. It's that you think you have an idea of what you want to say. 
something stirring in your mind and your heart and so you put it to paper and you realize well that's not just it so you do something that is life-giving to your soul you keep writing and that's not really it so you keep writing and in that process of being forced to articulate on paper what it is that you're thinking in your mind or feeling in your heart what it is that you sense the Lord is doing then all of a sudden clarity comes and you kind of understand why you initially put pen to paper and practically speaking one of the reasons that I journal is because I found that sometimes God is stirring things in my heart even for the church but I don't know what it is call it a, a prompting of the spirit call it a a premonition, something that God is doing in my mind or my heart, but I begin to write it out. But it's often in that function of writing that things become clear. So don't think of writing as the product of thinking. Think of writing as thinking. We use the phrase thinking out loud. That's a good way of saying it. But I'm thinking on paper. I'm writing down because I want to get clarity in my mind. Uh, and so even I find in whatever you're doing, preparing sermons, anything that requires thought, if I can take the time to write it, uh, then it becomes uh, a lot more clear. Um, now, we'll talk about uh, how you journal in a minute, but let me talk about one more thought on the why, why you journal. Well, you journal to remember. We want to recall to mind all the things that God has done. We journal to think because the actual process of writing is going to bring us clarity. But here's something also so important, and this is, again, this is so life-giving to our souls and our relationship with God. All this under the umbrella of walking with Jesus, remember. We journal because we want to pray. A lot of time, my journal entries are nothing but a sentence. Um, God, I saw this in your word today, or God, I really need grace for this. And that's the journal entry for that day. It's just an, an, an ask for prayer. Now, this is really helpful on a couple of levels. First of all, you could do this as a regular practice. Let's say you have trouble praying. You have trouble paying attention in prayer. Your mind wanders, you get distracted. We can all uh, understand that and relate to that. And so what you do is instead of just saying your prayers, speaking them out loud, then write them out. And I've done this before at times. Sometimes I've taken out my computer and typed out my prayers. And the actual function of your fingers moving across the keyboard or the function of the pen moving across the page, whatever it is, it helps you sustain a stream of consciousness as you're having a conversation with the Lord. In the same way that we advocated praying out loud because it adds another sensory perception. We're not just speaking it, but we're also hearing it at the same time. In the same way, once you're writing it, you're not only just uh, coming out of your mind or coming out of your mouth, you're also seeing it on the screen, you're seeing it on the page. And that has a way of kind of doubly impressing the importance of that prayer on your soul. And I would just encourage you as an aside, by the way, if you're struggling with your prayer life, start there. Pray out loud, pray in a way that you're writing it down or you're praying it the way that you're uh, keying it in. There's some way that there's another sensory perception being added to it and it breathes some more life into your prayer life. Um, a lot more we could say about that, but I think those are the three principal things I'd want to communicate about journaling. It's a journaling to remember, it's journaling to think, uh, so critically important, and it's journaling to pray. Um, let me stop here and just say, uh, I could have said this at the top, but it's important to ask what journaling is not. And by thinking of journaling as remembering and as thinking, as in praying, we've kind of answered this question for us. And that is, journaling is not keeping a diary. I quoted C.S. Lewis uh, a while ago, and not long after he became a Christian, uh, if you read his biography written by Alistair McGrath, um, he said at one point that he was so grateful that he gave up this practice of keeping a diary. <laughs> and I think that's because he was under the compulsion to record everything that he was doing throughout his life, as if some point our children or grandchildren are going to pick this up, so we have to edit them in such a way that uh, kind of hides our darkest moments and makes us feel like we have more an intense relationship with the Lord than we have. Um, I guess you could keep a diary. A diary wouldn't be a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with keeping a diary. Um, if I felt like I was keeping a diary personally, I don't know. I would just feel under this pressure uh, to 
pour out my soul emotionally or have some kind of a cathartic moment every time I open my journal. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't intend to do that. Um, so that leads us, if it's not a diary, what is this? Well, let's, let's jump to the second question. We've talked about why you should keep it. It's not a diary. Uh, then how do you journal? How do you do this? Well, step one, get yourself a journal. Uh, the most popular journal, I guess, among a lot of people is called a moleskin journal. You can get them at uh, a bookstore. You can also get them at Walmart. They're great because they're pretty sturdy, but they're inexpensive. The pages are nice and the texture of the page is nice. Your pen works nice against it. Um, I'm really bad on anything I have to touch. I'm hard on Bibles. I'm hard on shoes. I'm hard on books. And so I've got a hardback instead of a, a softback that I bought just because well, because I like the color of it. Frankly, if I can admit, I'm just that shallow. I like the hardback. I like something that was lined because I don't have that great of handwriting and I need something with pretty big lines. So for that practical reason, I bought a hardback uh, journal. And so just find a, a journal. Maybe you want to use a, a three ring binder. Or maybe you want to use a notebook that's spiral. There's lots of different options. You can get fancy about it if you want to, uh, or you can just get something simple and uh, that, will, that will meet your needs. A lot of great options for that. Then once you have that journal, as you're spending your normal time with the Lord, we've talked about prayer. We've talked about reading the Word of God and the importance of it. We've talked about fasting, but just in that time you have normal time with the Lord, just express back what God is speaking to you. So this is my journal I'm holding in my hand. I've been keeping this one for uh, uh, a few weeks now. But honestly, I, this is me personally. I know some people that are faithful to journal every single day. And I try to enter something in my journal every day, but I don't generally do that. I'll also miss a couple of days throughout the week. Uh, some journal entries are long. Uh, some journal entries are short. A lot of them, like I said, may just be a couple of sentences. I may see something in reading the Word of God and I may say, you know what, I don't understand this. Um, God, could you please help me with that? Give me insight. And so I write a question mark in the journal. Here is the prayer we were trying to call staff members last year. So I was kind of documenting those things that went through that, uh, that conversation. The last journal entries I have are just a couple of sentences in here. Uh, Lord, give me your grace with this uh, today. So but what I found is, is that that kind of uh, inconsistency and in length, if I could say it that way, is kind of reflexive of the way the Lord works, right? I mean, there have been times in my life where there is just this intense leading of the Lord to do something. And I think, you know what, I would hate to forget how deeply God worked in my life right now. I've got to write that down. There are other times in life where um, it's not that intense and where the Lord is speaking to you, but you're going through the regular rhythms of life. And so my journal entries are uh, simple. Uh, they're not as long. They're not as lengthy. And so I, I think that having different links of journal entries just kind of reflects the way the Lord works, the rhythms of uh, kind of what it is to walk with the Lord. And so don't feel guilty if one journal entry is very long and another journal entry is very short. That seems to be just the way the Lord works inside of our lives and the way that He um, operates inside of our lives. And so the way we record this oftentimes reflects this. So all different kinds of journals you could buy and in the same way, all different kind of ways you could journal. Some people also take their journal uh, and use it as the same place to take sermon notes. I think that's a great idea because you can go back and reflect on that later. But taking notes during a sermon, and maybe we'll take another night to talk about this, is again, not so much about recording something that you're going to go back to later, you could, but it's actually more about making sure that by hearing something and by seeing something, uh, seeing somebody preach or speak and by hearing something and by writing it down also, that taking it down to paper forces you again to think through what you've been processing. I'm going to give one more thought to this by way of closing. Uh, your Bibles are open there to Exodus chapter 13. Uh, skip down to verse 16. We read verse 9 a minute ago, but look at verse 16. So four times in this chapter it talks about the strong hand of the Lord. Now, the reason why that's great is because, yes, God delivered them with a strong hand, but God told them he was going to deliver them with a strong hand. So the big thing is not just that God did it, but that God remembered to do it. He had a memory for us. And so since God remembered us, he wants us also to remember him. And so here's verse 
16. So Exodus 13, 16. It shall be as a mark on your hand or frontlets between your eyes, for by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. I was just thinking about this passage, the idea of it being on the frontlets of your head or on your hand, developed a practice that uh, Orthodox Jews practice today and some others, but mainly the Orthodox Jews, of putting boxes on their hands wrapped with a leather strap, uh, also a box on their forehead. And inside that tall box are little pieces of parchment and on those parchments are written scriptures. The idea is the scriptures actually there on your forehead, actually there on your hand. They have a literal interpretation of this passage, but it wasn't taken that way immediately in this context. The idea was not literal, I think, in verse 16, but it was as a metaphor. In the same way that if you had a mark on your hand that you would always see, every day you would see that mark on your hand, or if you had a mark on your forehead, other people would see that God had delivered you. So a good way to say it would be this, that in the same way God made the people distinct, he marked them, that what should be the defining quality of their life for the rest of the life would be the fact that they had been delivered. This is the defining miracle of the Old Testament. It's the defining miracle of the Bible until Christ comes and dies and rises again and he does so so that he should redeem us. And the defining mark of our lives is that we have given our lives to Christ and that he has delivered us and redeemed us. And that is something we never, ever want to forget. So, as the Lord moves in your life, as he continues to deliver you in big ways and in smaller ways, take time each day as you spend time with the Lord to write it down. Uh, don't feel overwhelmed by it. Just express to God in whatever measure, to whatever length, the things that he's been doing in your life. And for that, you'll gain clarity on what God is doing in the future as well. Now let's go to him in prayer. Father, Lord, we're so grateful for your love for us. So grateful, Lord, that you have delivered us. It is the defining mark on our lives. And Lord, what you're doing in our lives, we don't want to forget. We want to remember. And so God, I pray that as we take on this practice of journaling, day by day, jotting down things that you're doing in our lives, God, you would give us your grace and your favor uh, Father, as we gain a greater clarity and never forget what you've done for us. And Father, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll see you Sunday as we get into Exodus 12 and 13.